All right, welcome back to the chapter five review. Yesterday, we completed question one, right? And we also got to do um, question two, which was a continuation of question one, okay? So this is what we had for FIFO. Now today, we're gonna be moving on to question number five here, where we're gonna be starting to do LIFO, okay? So we're, this is, we're not gonna do, a, it's not gonna be a stream of continuation, no. We're gonna start all over, but this time, we're gonna be using LIFO, okay? So in this case, right, we have question number five here. Your inventory, um, your inventory uh, method is going to be periodic and it's LIFO. And of, of course, assume that all purchases were made on an account and we are going to be rounding to the nearest penny, okay? So here's a new set of scenarios that we are looking at right now. Okay, we're starting over from brand new. We're not going to carry over from the previous one, okay? We're actually just going to go ahead and start all over, but this time we're starting on August, okay? Now, as I as I mentioned before, right, I only want you to just focus on just the conversion entry. That's just the most important thing because when we journalize the purchases of everything and the purchase returns, right, it is all the same, as any other method that we use. So again, we already practiced it twice um, for question number one, right? We practiced journalizing our purchases and then journalizing our returns and allowances, right? All of that is rinse and repeat. Only difference is what are the numbers that you're plugging in? So in this case, for the rest of the scenarios for the LIFO and the uh, weighted average, I want you to just focus on just the conversion entry because that's where the numbers are gonna be different, okay? However, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at this scenario, plug them into our inventory worksheet, and figure out how we're going to use the, uh, the LIFO method to cost it out, okay? So let's go ahead and get started right here. Question five. So on August 5th, right, we end up purchasing 1,200 toys at a dollar each with a freight costing $50, Okay. So this time we purchased 1,200 toys at a dollar each with a cost with a freight cost of $50. So question five here, it is August 5th, okay? We purchased 1,200 units at a dollar each with a freight of 50. So in this case, right, what would be my total purchase price here? Twelve hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. Okay, plus fifty. Make it to twelve hundred fifty dollars. Good, right? Total cost of twelve fifty. Now here is where we need to figure out what our cost per item is. Since we're using LIFO, we it's very similar to FIFO, except we are calculating the different batches in a different way, right? But at the end of the day, we still need to make sure we have a separate as a separate cost for every batch of inventory that we purchase. So in this case, what is my cost per item? All right, I take my total cost of twelve fifty. Uh, I have one point zero four one six six seven. Okay, and we're gonna divide it by our quantity of twelve hundred. Okay, so there you go. 1.0, if I expand that out, um, 4167. Okay, good. So then let's see what happened next. Then on August 7th, you end up returning 200 of those toys. They were the wrong color, but you were willing to accept a 20% discount. Okay, so in this case, you opened up your box of inventory, right? You checked all 1,200 units and found out that 12 hundred of them were the wrong color so you are willing to keep you willing to accept the 20 percent discount and still keep the toys so in this case i am trying to attempt to return 200 of them but i'm willing to accept a 20 percent discount okay so in this case i need to go down below here right to my returns and allowances in this case am i returning anything no i'm not 
However, how much did this batch of inventory actually cost me? What did I purchase my items at? Since I only have one batch of inventory, what price point did I purchase my items at? One, oh, the, uh, you purchased them at $1, but it was 1.04167, that's the total cost, right? Right, but in this case, right, we cannot return freight or shipping costs, right? Because that's one of the expenses that we had to incur that was separate from buying my inventory, right? I had to pay my vendor extra money to send those items to my store. So in this case, I cannot return the price of my shipping price. But what can I return? The $1 per thing. Correct. I can only refund that $1, right? Because in this case, I had to pay this extra $50 for shipment so that's a charge that I have to assume a loss on right I cannot get a refund for that so in this case it's cost me a dollar now in this case if my refund right if I'm supposed to return 200 of those units right for a dollar each right but I'm not getting all of the money back I'm only getting 20% of that money back because I'm accepting that I I'm accepting the wrong um, colored items. However, the vendor convinced me to keep them, but also is giving me a 20% discount to reprimand for their mistakes. So in this case, right, I can only discount the only the 200 items that I am attempting to return because those are the products that are wrong. I cannot, I cannot tell my vendor to give me a 20% discount on all my items because a thousand of those toys were correct. That's not right of you to be able to um, tell your uh, vendor to give you a, a discount on all your items when they only gave you the mistake of 200 items. So in this case, how much money, how much of a refund will I be able to get back? Okay, so I'm trying to, I'm attempting to return two of those items, 200 of those items. And I'm only getting a 20% discount. $160 would be the total you'd be charged. You could get $40 off, right? Okay, good. So you did it, you did math a little backwards. That's correct, right? Because in this case, let's see. If I were to just take a full refund, okay? So 200 times that $1, my full refund would be the $200 but I'm keeping the products and I'm only accepting a 20% discount. So I need to know what 20% of $200 is, right? And that's gonna give me $40. That's how much refund I'm gonna get. And yes, that's correct. It is gonna take it off of my money. So that means I'm only gonna get, I'm, I'm gonna get a discount for uh, uh, $40, okay? So then, now that I have, right, I figured out I'm only getting $40 back, okay? That means I need to figure out what my actual new goods available is going to be. So in this case, I need to, I'm going to create my goods available table here. Okay, and this is going to tell me, well, in this case, my first batch of inventory, I purchased 1,200, okay? But I end up not returning anything, right? However, because they sent me 200 of the wrong items, I only paid a discount off of 200 of those items. So in this case, right, I have to figure out how much my new total cost is. Well, there's two ways we can figure that out, right? You can either say, well, a thousand of them are at a dollar, and then 200 of them are at a 20% discount, so 80%, okay? So 80 cents each. So if I add those up together, I should get $1,160. I need to add my freight of 50 to get me to 12, to uh, my 12.50. I'm sorry, 12.50 minus the... Um, the uh, discount, so then 
if I'm at 11, uh, 1160 plus 50, that's going to give me 1210, right? Or I can simply just do this, right? If I already know I have to pay the, the, the shipping anyways, right? I can take my total cost of 1250 and minus out that, that refund and get the same exact answer, 1210, right? This is just a quicker, easier way to figure it out because then you don't have to figure out what your purchase price is and then add your freight. You can just already take your total cost and just subtract out what your um, refund is going to be for. Okay, so I'm at the end, at the end of the day. I now owe twelve ten in grand total for these twelve hundred units. So that means I also now need to also figure out a new cost per item because now, right, even though I have the same amount of units, my new total cost must be spread across these 1,200 units, right? Because I have a new total cost now, okay? So how do I figure this out? What's my new total cost per item here? twenty one. Not a dollar twenty one. No, a dollar point two one. Blah, 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 blah. I got a dollar point zero zero. So twelve twelve ten. Okay, divided by twelve hundred. Yeah, I was trying to use my poor old head. So. <laughs> No worries. So it'd be about roughly a dollar per item. Okay, so they go 1.0083333, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, right? That is my new cost per item, okay? Now in this case, yes. Did you really return? Oh, never mind. We didn't return 200, we just got discount. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So in this case, there you go, right? That's my new average cost because in this case, they convinced me to keep those 200 items because I can resell them at a different point, price point, whatever it is, because there's nothing wrong with those items. They're just the different colors. They weren't the, the inventory that I ordered, okay? But in this case, okay, I can still sell them. So at the end of the day, I still make a profit at the end of the day. They just gave me a 20% discount to Ripperman for their mistake because they shipped me the wrong items. All right, and then what I'm gonna do for here, Okay, just for this example only, I am going to color code it so that we can kind of figure out how we calculate the cost of goods sold using LIFO, okay? But for the next example, I'm just going to eliminate the colors in general, okay? All right, so I'm going to call this the red batch, okay? So this is the updated uh, amount because this is what I began with when I end up getting a discount on, on 200 of those items. So this is the new updated amount. So then on August 10, we purchased 750 units at $1.25 with a freight of 45. So 750 at $1.25 with a freight of 45. Okay. It is August 10, 750 at $1.25 with a freight of 45. Okay, so what is my purchase price here? It's $937.50. Good. Plus my $45. Make it the total of $982.50. Okay. And what is my cost per item here for this it's second the batch? The number of $1.31. Ah, good. An even dollar and 31 cents. Okay. So let's see what happened next. Then on August 11th, you end up returning 50 of them because they were broken, okay, for a full refund, okay? You can't sell, you can't sell um, broken toys and you can't expect to pay for those 50 broken toys. So you go back to your vendor and say, hey, 50 of them are broken due to your shipping, okay? So please give me a refund, a full refund for them so I can purchase more, okay? So 50 of those toys end up being broken. So now... You're going to get a full refund on them. Okay? 
Now, like I mentioned before, right, this 50 is going to refer to the previous batch of inventory that you just purchased. Why? Because of rule of thumb here, again, when you receive your inventory items, you need to do this. This is very, very necessary for a business in general, right? You never want to wait to the very end when you open up the boxes and find, oh my God, I have broken stuff in this box. Your rule of thumb is you need to do your checks and balance, right? You need to open up all the boxes to check to make sure you have all of the items there and they all are in good condition. So in this case, the next day I reported, hey, I have 50 broken toys. Please send me a full refund. So in this case, that's what we have to do. Okay. So I'm going to go down to my returns and allowances this time. I actually got 50 broken toys. Now, at what cost or at what unit price did I actually pay for these items? One twenty-five. A dollar twenty-five, right? Because it's the it's always going to be the recent one that you just purchased. Okay, so a dollar twenty-five. If I'm getting a full refund, how much money am I going to be expecting to get? Sixty-two fifty back. $62.50 back, okay? So now I need to update my inventory because now I started out with 750, but I end up returning 50 of those items. So now I only have 700 items, okay? Same thing with your total cost. I started out with uh, 982.50, but I end up refunding $62.50. So I should be getting a total of 920 that I now owe. So in this case, I have a new quantity and I have a new total cost. So I have to figure out what my new cost per item is. Okay? And what is it? 920 divided by 700. One point three one four two eight five. Okay, one point three one four two eight five. Good, excellent. Okay, and of course, I'm going to color code this just so that um, I can show you how it works for LIFO. Okay, that's all I'm using this for. Okay. So that's my second batch of inventory, and this is my adjustment. So I only have 700 from after making my purchases and making my refund. I only have 700 that I actually purchased. Okay. So then August 20th, you end up purchasing 400 toys at $1.50 with a freight cost of 25. So 400 at $1.50 and a freight of 25. I forgot the date. Um, April, August 20th. August 20th, 400 at $1.50. With a freight of $25. Okay. So in this case, what's my purchase price here? 600. 600. Good. Plus 25. will give me a total cost of um, six twenty five. Yeah, good, six twenty five. Okay. And now I need to divide it. Okay. What's my cost per item? One point five six two five. Good. Okay. One point fifty six and a quarter penny. Okay. Good. So let's see what happened next. August 25th, right? So we end up purchasing an additional 600 toys at $1.75. So in this case, from the time being from 
April, from August 20th to August 25th, nothing was wrong with this batch of inventory. So that means we got to carry this batch of inventory to our goods available. And then we have to report that on the 25th of August, we uh, purchased 600 toys at $1.75 with a freight of 30. So 600, 175, and 30. 600 dollar 75 freight of 30. So in this case, what's my purchase price here? 1050. Good. Plus 30. 1080. Okay. Divide it by my 600 units. I get a dollar eighty, but that's just a flat amount. Um, it's definitely not a dollar eighty. Nope. Or is it? Oh, it is one eighty. So that's good, right? Because your per your original purchase price is a dollar and um, seventy five cents each, right? You're taking the freight of thirty and dividing it across six hundred units, so it just basically spread across five. Um, cents per each um, item. So in this case, you do get a flat 180, right? So as I mentioned before, right, that means since I made a, this fourth purchase, right, the third batch of inventory had nothing wrong with it. So that means I need to carry this down into my inventory, uh, or in this case, my, my goods available, right? Because nothing was wrong, and I did not make any returns here. So... This means that I can transfer all of this over, okay? And I'm going to make this, uh, we'll make it green, okay? All right, now, this fourth batch of inventory, right? We don't know yet if we have to make a return, right? Because in real life, right, you don't ever get to those uh, those. Um, circumstances where you have to return things until you open up the box and actually take a look. But because this is a scenario, we already know ahead of time that we are actually going to make changes to it. So there's no need to drop it into your on uh, your goods available yet, okay? Because on April on August 26, you end up returning 25 defective toys for a full refund, okay? 25 defective toys for a full refund. So I am returning 25. How much um, cost per item or what was the unit price that I paid to purchase these 600 toys? $1.75. $1.75. And because I'm getting a full refund, how much is my full refund going to be? Forty-three dollars and seventy-five cents refund. So that means, okay, my fourth batch of inventory, right? I purchased originally six hundred, but I had to return twenty-five of them. So that means I should have five hundred and seventy-five um, toys left, right? I originally supposed to owe ten eighty, but I end up getting a refund for forty-three dollars and seventy-five cents. So that means I actually now owe ten thirty six twenty five. So that means I need to solve for my new cost per item, right? Because I have a new quantity and a new total cost. So what is my cost per item for this last batch of inventory I just purchased? One point eight eight zero two one seven three nine. Excellent. Okay, and I'm going to make this blue. Okay, and let's go ahead and see what happened next. Okay, 
Then we reach the end of our month, August 31st, and it tells us that you have a total of 1,500 toys on hand, okay? So that means I'm going to come down here, and my ending balance is 1,500 units. So that means I need to do three things. I need to sum up my total purchases, sum up my goods available, and sum up my purchase returns and allowances and discounts. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to highlight this so you know that these are um, your uh, calculations here. So I'm going to go for this light blue okay, or light purple. Okay, so in this case, what was my grand total number of purchases I made? Twenty nine fifty. Twenty nine fifty. Okay, good. What was my total purchase price? Thirty-seven, eighty-seven, fifty. Thirty-seven, eighty-seven, fifty. Good. What was my total freight? Thirty-seven, fifty. One fifty. All right. Bringing me my total total cost to be three thousand nine hundred thirty-seven dollars and fifty. So let's go ahead and calculate my totals here, okay? What is my total What is my total um, goods available? Oh. Yep. Okay, good. Twenty eight seventy five. And what's my total total cost of my goods available? May I'll shut up so you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't enough to yesterday. Oh, I'll I'll finish it. It's three thousand. $791.25. Good, good. Okay, good. And then what was my total uh, number of units I returned? 75. 75 at a grand total refund of? One forty six twenty five. One forty six twenty five. Okay, good, excellent. So now that we solved for our tables, right? Let's go ahead and plug our numbers into the left side of the uh, table here. So purchases. Well, I made a total purchase of the twenty nine fifty for a total of three thousand seven hundred and eighty seven dollars and fifty cents. Right. I had a refund, right? I returned 75 items at a grand total of $146.25. So in this case, right, make sure you subtract these two numbers, right? Because this is my purchase and this is what I returned. So in this case, I'm decreasing the amount that I purchased, right? So in this case, I should have $28.75, right? At a grand total cost of... 36.41.25, right? I also need to add my freight because once again, freight is a separate cost, right? 
to inventory, but it's included as the part of inventory, but it must be separate, right? Something you cannot refund. So in this case, I'm going to add my 150. So that should still give me my total to be 2,875 units at a grand total cost of $3,791.25, which matches my goods available because I don't have beginning inventory, right? My assumption is if I don't have beginning inventory, my net purchases ends up becoming my goods available, right? Because I'm adding zero. I'm adding zero to my net purchases, so that's just going to give me my goods available to be identical to what I have in my table right here, okay? So now that I was given on August 31st, someone went down to the basement and told me, hey, you have 1,500 toys left on hand, okay? So that means my assumption is I must have sold a grand total of 1325. No. Thir oh, close. 1375. <laughs> good, good, good. So 1375 units is what I sold. So I can start building my tables, right? So I'm going to go ahead and build my table right here for my, um, my cost of goods sold here. Okay. I'm going to build it. I can put it right here. Okay, I'm going to call this my cost of goods sold. Okay, and this is going to be my running balance, right? This is basically going to let me know what the sum of my this column is. And it's going to, I'm going to have it also automate, automatically cal calculate how much my grand total is. Okay. So now, using the rules of LIFO, okay, which batch am I going to sell first? The last one. Which is? $1.75. Okay, so the last one that we purchased at $1.75, right, which was on August 25th, right? Right now, this it's that blue batch right here, right? Am I going to sell all of it or some of it? All of it. I'm going to sell all 575 items. So in this case, I already know it's going to cost me $10.36.25. Okay, and I'm going to highlight this blue so you know this was the last batch that we just purchased. Okay, and I'm going to cross this one out because just to, re just to remind you that I no longer have it. Okay, strike through. So let's see, all right, I sold 575 units. How many more do I need to keep going? I have a long way to go. So what, which batch is next? You've got 800 left, so it's the, the next one. Which is good, right? The 400, right? At right now, it is $1.56 and 2.5, okay? Which, since we're gonna get rid of all of it, right? Boom, there you go. I got rid of all of it. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and cross this out. Okay, so I'm at 975 and I needed to get to 1375. So how many more do I need to calculate or how many more do I need to um, sell? So in this case, um, if you can't do the math here, I can just simply add it to my Excel and it will tell me I need 400 more units. Now, which batch am I going to take this 400 units out from? At the 1.3142857. Excellent. So my yellow batch here at that one at that 1.34. Okay. Now, in this case, I'm not selling all 700, so I cannot just... I cannot just take this 920. I need to calculate how much it's going to cost me to sell only 400 of them at this cost per item. So in this case, I need to do my equal round formula because I need to figure out what 400 times that 
one four two eight five is gonna cost me. So how much is it gonna cost me? And I want it by two decimal places, right? Because I want to round to the nearest penny. So how much is it gonna cost me to sell four hundred units at a dollar three one four two eight five? If you're using a calculator, I would recommend to go um, at least up to the sixth digit after the decimal. Okay, four hundred at a dollar three one four two eight five. I have five hundred twenty five dollars and seventy one cents. Excellent. Five twenty five seventy one. Okay. And I'm gonna highlight this because this belonged to my yellow batch of inventory. Okay. All right, so I got rid of, since I'm using LIFO, right, last in, first out rule, I started from the bottom and started making my way slowly up to the top. So in this case, I got rid of my blue, my green, and then my yellow to give me a grand total of 1375 items. Grand total cost me $2,186.96. So that means if I subtract these two numbers together, my ending balance should give me a total of $1,604.29. Now, to double confirm this ending balance number, let's go ahead and build my table here for my ending balance inventory. Okay, so ending inventory. Okay, I have a remainder of that red batch for 1,200 units here. Okay, add a grand total cost here of this 1210. Okay, um, and let's see. Well, my yellow batch had 700, right? And I got rid of 400, so that means I should be left with 300 units at my cost of that 1.31. I can either calculate this or I can simply take this. If I know that I had 920, right, and I know that I sold $525.71, I should get a remainder of $394.29. So this overall should give me, if I go ahead and equal sum this, a grand total of my 1500 units at a grand total cost of 1604.29 okay so excellent perfect we match on both ends okay so and then of course if you want to you can also highlight it so you know which batch came from which okay so this one's from the red batch and this one's from the yellow batch okay Important thing you need to know about this is that this is going to be the batches of inventory you will be transferring over into the next inventory worksheet, right? In this exact order, grouped up exactly like this, okay? You have to keep it separate to transfer it over, right? Because it's still using the rules of LIFO. You're still going to keep them in their separate batches, and you're going to keep costing them out as um, your batches of inventory as, as it is right here, right? So in this case, that is important to know. All right, so now that we reach the end of uh, our inventory worksheet, we need to now go ahead and do our conversion entry. So conversion entry, question number six. How should I journalize my conversion entry? 
Today is August 31st, right, in the scenario course. So what should I be expected to have in my journal for my conversion entry? We are selling toys, so we have toys. Good. And, and okay. And then we we saw the toys, so that cost of goods sold. Okay. And then we also have to return some of the items, so we have purchase discounts and allowances. Okay, purchase returns and allowances. Okay. And that's for the day, and then for credit, uh, we bought the toys to sell, which is purchase exclusive. Okay. And then we also pay for the uh, delivery fees, right? Good, excellent. And then we have a leftover toys to sell next uh, accounting period. Okay. Toy. Now in this case, did I have beginning inventory? No. No, so in this case, the rules of this, you don't necessarily need to put in any accounts that's not going to affect your debits and credits. Like, you wouldn't add okay. a zero balance in there yeah. because that would that would be pointless, right? Because yeah. it does nothing to the accounts because yeah. it's, it's a zero balance, right? It's not going to affect my debits or it's not going to affect my credit. So in this case, you don't necessarily need to have it. Now, I understand why you did it here because... It's just so then you remember, so then the next accounting period, you can't forget about including that. But yeah. for this, you don't need it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what was the total value of my ending balance in my inventory? We have $1,604.29. Okay, what was the total value of my cost of goods sold? We sold $22,186.96. I, I got $21,000. Oh, $21. Okay, or $22,100. Okay, yeah. and then my total returns and allowances was hundred forty six dollars and twenty five cents. Hundred forty six, good. And my total purchases was three thousand seven hundred eighty seven dollars and fifty cents. And my total freight was hundred fifty dollars. Hundred and fifty dollars. So again, just to ensure the accuracy of your accounting, we must test to see if my total debits match my total credit. So I have a total debit of $3,937.50 on the left with a $3,937.50 on the right. So in this case, yes, my journals came out even. And I'm going to add a little description saying this is a conversion entry for periodic um, inventory, right? Other things I could say here is, what was the total amount of units I had left on hand? 15 toys on hand. And I sold 13.75 toys and returned 75 toys. Okay, that could be your description right there, All right? Excellent, so Let's go ahead and see what happened next, okay? Question number seven says continue on the inventory worksheet, okay? From question number five, okay? And your inventory method is still periodic and it's still LIFO. So here's what you had at the end of August 31st. You should have a total of 1,500 toys on hand, which is true, right? Because we just finished our inventory worksheet, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this ending balance right here and we're going to copy it over into our new inventory worksheet, okay? So question seven here, right? We're going to carry that 1,200 units plus that 300, okay? Um, let's see. Um, 
there. We're going to copy over the unit prices for that. Okay. So it cost me a dollar and eight, a dollar and eight cents, eight, eight point eight cents. Okay. And my second one cost me a dollar thirty one four two. Okay. And of course, these numbers are going to also cross over as well, right? You could choose whether you want to um, calculate it or you could choose to copy it because there's no point to calculate it, right? You already have the answer here. So there you go. I copy those over. And like I said, now I'm just going to remove the colors because we kind of get how to do this now, okay? And I'm actually just going to highlight this whole thing. And I'm going to make this my calculation, um, my calculations, okay? So starting with the first one, my beginning inventory should be that 1,500 units at a grand total cost of that 16.04 and 29 cents, okay? All right, that's my beginning inventory. So let's see what happened next. September 5th, we end up purchasing 650 toys at $1.65 with a freight of 25. So 650, 6, 650 at 165 with a freight of 25. So it is now September 5th. We purchased 650 units at $1.65 with a freight of 25. So in this case, what's my purchase price here? Well, seven twenty-five. One. One oh seven two point five. That's fine. Good. Been dot wrong. <laughs> That's fine. There you go. You got one thousand seventy-two dollars and fifty cents plus plus that freight of twenty-five dollars. $10.97.50. Excellent. And then last but not least, since we are using LIFO, we need to figure out what our cost per item is. One point six eight eight four six one five. Okay, good. All right, so one thing I forgot to do is I needed to create my um, uh, goods available table once again. And I need to include um, my beginning balance here. So I have... Um, the 15, or yeah, the 12 with the 3. Okay, just copy that in there. Okay, because this, my beginning inventory is going to be included to my goods available. So that's something I need to start out with. Okay. All right, so there you go. We entered in our first purchase of the month for September. Okay, so let's see what happened next. Okay. September 10 rolls around, and we end up purchasing a 1,000 toys at $1.80 with a freight of $40. So in this case, my first previous batch that I pur purchased here is nothing wrong with it. Everything's good, so I can transfer that into my goods available. I also have to record that I purchased additional thousand toys at a dollar eighty with a freight of forty. Okay, so it is September ten. Okay, we purchased a thousand toys at a dollar eighty with the per with the freight of forty. So what's my total purchase price here? Eighteen hundred plus forty gives me a total cost of eighteen forty. 
1840. And of course, this should be an easy one divided by a thousand. My cost per item here is dollar eighty four. A dollar eighty four even. Okay, so again, since I didn't make any changes to my purchase on September fifth, that means I can carry this value down to my inventory, um, or in this case, goods available, right? Because this one, this batch is good. Okay, so I need to add my 10.97.50 in there all right so that's my goods available i got my beginning i got my first batch of inventory in there now let's see if i make any changes to my second batch of inventory then i need to adjust it so let's see what happens next so on september 12th you end up returning 50 defective toys for a full refund so 50 of them ended up being defective and we requested for a full refund okay so go to your purchase returns and allowance 50 of these items are defective okay at what unit price did i purchase this second batch of inventory for dollar 80 okay so therefore what is my grand total refund 90 dollars Ninety dollars. So that means this third, the second batch of inventory that I purchased. I originally purchased a thousand of them, but returned fifty of them. So I should have nine fifty remaining now. Okay, total cost. Right, I had a total cost of the eighteen forty, but ended up getting a refund for ninety dollars. So I am now at seventeen fifty. Okay. So new cost and our new cost, no total cost and new quantity. So that means I need to solve for now my new cost per item. And how much is it going to be this time? One point eight four two one zero five two. Okay, let's see. Let me go ahead and expand that for you guys. Okay. So there you go. One point eight four two one zero five two. Okay, I don't need that many numbers, but that's good enough. Okay. Good. You got the idea. Okay, good. So let's see what happened next. September 20th rolls around. We end up purchasing an additional 500 toys at $1.85 with the freight costing $20. So 500 at $1.85 and a freight of 20. Five hundred at a dollar eighty five with a freight of twenty. Okay, so in this case, what is my purchase price here? If I purchase five hundred units at a dollar eighty five. It's $9.25. $9.25 plus your $20. It's going to give you a total cost of $9.45. $9.45. And my cost per item is going to be an even dollar 89 cents. An even dollar and 89 cents. Okay. So let's see what happened next. September 22nd. We end up returning a hundred of those toys because they were yet again the wrong color. But we end up not wanting the discount. We wanted the full refund. Okay. So in this case, yes, you don't always have to accept the discount. You could be like, no, I this is this this isn't the product that I want. I want a full refund. So in this case, I'm returning a hundred of those toys because they were the wrong color, and you said. I want a full refund. So in this case, a hundred 
or the full refund. Okay. So you got a hundred units. At what unit price did you purchase this batch of inventory for? One eighty-five. A dollar eighty-five. So that means my full refund is going to be one hundred and eighty-five dollars. One hundred and eighty-five dollars. So that means we need to update this because I did not purchase five hundred items anymore because I end up returning a hundred of them. Okay, and since I got a full refund on a dollar $185, that means I'm gonna take my total cost of that $945 and subtract out that refund to get me a total of $760. Okay, so that means what is my new cost per item going to be? Even 1.90. Even 1.90. Very rare that happens, but there you go. You got an even number when you purchased it. And you got an even number when you returned a portion of the money. So in this case, even $1.90. Okay. So then on September 25th, we end up making our last purchase of the month, which is that 100 toys, right? Because we returned 100 of them. We went back and ordered another 100 toys at $1.75, and the freight cost me $5. So this one is a straightforward, easy one. So in this case, it is um, September 25th, purchase 100 units at $1.75 with a freight of five. So in this case, purchase price, $1.75, Plus five dollars gives you one eighty divided by a hundred gives you a dollar eighty. Okay. And because we know this is the end of the month, right? Because when we um, at the end of September, right, September thirtieth, we end up taking a physical count, and someone reported that you have seven hundred and fifty toys on hand. That means that the batch that I just purchased for that 100 items was the correct items. So I can add this batch into my um, goods available, okay? For that 180. Okay. And I now know that at the end of the month, I should have 750 units on hand. Okay, so now that I reached the end of my inventory cycle here, right, at the end of the month, we can go ahead and solve for my purchases, my goods available, and my returns and allowances. So what was the total amount of units that I purchased for the month of September? Two, two, five, zero. Yes, 2,250 2, units, okay? What was my total purchase price? 3,972.50. Good. What was my total freight? $90. $90, giving me a total, total cost of 4,000. $62.50. Excellent. Very good. So let's go ahead and also sum up my totals here. Okay, so uh, my total goods available. How much goods available do I actually have? 2100 Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Goods available, including your... Um, that that is thirty six hundred. Yes. Okay. At a total total cost of five thousand three hundred ninety one dollars and seven cents. Okay. This you don't technically have to solve this 
this table here, you're going to end up getting the same results down below when you calculate your goods available. But this is also a good way to keep, you know, your numbers in check. Okay. How many items did I return in grand total? 150. All right, 150 at a grand total cost of, or a refund for? $275. Wow, $275 even, okay? So then let's go ahead and plug our numbers into our inventory worksheet on the left side here. So I purchased a total of 2250 at a total cost of three three thousand nine hundred seventy two fifty. But I end up returning 150 items at a total refund for $275. So that should leave me with an ending of $2,100 at a total cost of $3,697.50. Okay. We also have to include the freight here. Freight does not make changes to your quantity, but it does make a change to your total cost. So in this case, I still have 2,100 units at a total cost of $3,787.50. Okay. This is where I need to include my beginning inventory, right? Because I began September with 1,500 units, okay? at a grand total of that $1,604, okay? We're going to copy down the net purchases that we solved from, from above, and we're gonna get our total goods available to be by adding up those two values, a total of 3,600 units at a grand total cost of $5,000. $391.79, which is my total um, goods available table up here, right? That's your matching point, so you know that you did your calculations correct here, okay? And this also gives you a better way to look at all your inventory on hand available, right? In one table, instead of having to look from this left table to this right table, right? You have it all right here, okay? So then, if I have a total of 750 units left on hand, my assumption is I must have sold 2,850 units, okay? So, if I have a total of 750 units, that means I'm going to build my table right here for my cost of goods sold, okay? Cost of goods sold, okay. So I'm gonna uh, put my totals here, okay. And this will be my equal sum here. My running balance, okay. Okay, so using the rules of LIFO now, right? Which batch of inventory am I going to sell from first? The 100 for a dollar 80. Good, 100 at a dollar 80, which we already know it's going to give you 180. Okay. So I sold my first 100. How many more do I need to keep selling? Uh, we definitely need to sell a lot more. So, next batch. Which batch I'm going to take out next? 400 at $1.90. Mm -hmm. Which, in this case, we already don't need to calculate that. We know. Okay. That's only 500 units. We need to keep going. So, which batch of inventory are we going to sell next? 
950 at 1.842. Good. Which, in this case, we already know it's going to give us 1750. Okay. So we sold a grand total of 1450. We have a long way to keep going. So, which next batch of inventory are we going to sell next? 650 at the 1.688. At the 1.688, good. Which we know to be um, a total of that 1,097. Okay. I'm going to insert a row here because I miscounted here. Okay, so we, need to sell the 300 we also need it. Okay, good. We need to sell that 300 at that one point. Uh, three, four, three, one, four, which we know is going to give us this amount here. So now I am down to 2,400 even. And how many more do I need to keep selling? 450 out of the 1,200. 450 and we only have one batch remaining which is out of this 1200 at a dollar zero 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 eight so in this case I need to calculate this because I need to know how much 400 of those items is going to cost me if it is at a dollar and eight cents right so 450 times 1.00 8333, comma, 2. And what is that magical number? 2. May, it's all yours. My calculator doesn't go that way. Right. should give you roughly $453.75. That's what I got, too. Perfect, okay? And, of course, if you were following along, you're going to know that all of these numbers right here are going to be crossed out, of course, because we ended up eliminating um, all of them except for one batch of inventory, right? We still have our first that we purchased a long time ago. And in this case, that gave me a total of cost of goods sold to be $4,635.54. So therefore, you should have a remainder of $756.25. So of course, we can make my ending inventory table here, right? Just to ensure that this number is correct. Okay, ending inventory because we know we have 750 units, right? Remaining out of that 1,200 units at a grand total, right? If we had this amount, right, and we sold this amount, right, you should get that same exact number of that 75625. Okay, excellent, All right? So once again, now that we've finished our inventory worksheet, right? Now less, co cl cl less color, so it's not as distractive just because, again, you can see where you're going. But we only do this because, think about it, in real life terms, right? You're going to be opening this inventory worksheet on a day-to-day -day basis, right? We're not going to be doing it like how we did it at the end of the month where we're calculating it all at once, right? No, 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 no. This inventory worksheet is something that you're going to look on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're anything like me, right, 
I, I, I don't remember what happened this morning. So in this case, those colors might be very useful for you, especially if you're going to be using this worksheet over and over and over again, right? Um, so um, that's just, you know, um, a recommendation if you prefer visual um, things like colors or color coding just so then you don't forget where you're at in your inventory worksheet, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Whatever makes it for easier for you to understand or even easier for you to, um, to solve for the cost of goods sold or whatever it is that you're solving for, okay? All right, so once again, let's go ahead and finish up this little section here by completing our conversion entry for question number eight here. Okay, so this time, my conversion entry, what is it going to have? What am I going to list in my journal entry for the conversion entry? It is now September 30th, so what should I be putting in my journal? We have we have, we have toys mm -hmm. and then cost of goods sold mm -hmm. and purchase return the another ones mm -hmm. and then purchase expense and buy and this time we have a leftover toys from previous cycle so we need to add toys for our credit good right so we have everything there and we need to include our toys that we carried over from the previous um, inventory. Excellent. So in this case, right, this would be um, known as your beginning inventory for toys. Okay, so let's start with the debit here. What is the total value of my ending inventory? Seven hundred and fifty six twenty five. Good. What was my total value of my cost of goods sold? $4,635.54. What was the total value of my purchase returns and allowances? 275 Okay. What was the total value of my purchases? $3,972.50. Good. And then what was the total value of my freight? 90. Okay. And last but not least, what was the total value of my beginning inventory? Uh, 1,604.29. Good. Okay. Again, rule of thumb here just to ensure that we didn't make any typos here, okay? So I got 5,666.79 on the left with a 5,666.79 on the right. So in this case, excellent. We did excellent. And of course, I want to say this is a conversion entry for periodic inventory. Okay, what do we know? We know that we have 750 toys on hand. Okay, what else do we know? We sold a total of... two hundred two thousand eight hundred and fifty toys. 2,850 toys. And we returned 150 toys. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So that concludes this section here for LIFO. Okay. Any questions?